Hello, this is TK Shazam. I like Tekken and talking about it. I'll also play along with Paul. I want people, more people, newer players, intermediate players, whoever, to maybe rethink how to approach turtles in this game and how to reapproach just how neutral is played, especially with the buffs. What do I mean by this? All right, so we all know Paul, he's pretty good. Oops. But, you know, a lot of his stuff comes from counter hit launches, right? That's where the big stuff comes in, right? But what do you do when the opponent, you know, is just stand blocking everything? They're not pressing into you, right? When when these are landing, but they're not they're not doing chip or they're not doing anything. In previously in seven, right? If they just block all your counter hit launchers, yeah, this used to be a counter hit launcher in seven. Doesn't do anything right now. Uh, you can't do anything, right? They just block all day, and now you're 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 boned, right? You gotta poke with a low, but this can get very predictable, especially when the opponent's like at this range, and you have to approach his Paul, and all you have is course of four to three, which is of course a godlike button, but when it was your only tool you know things got a little bit dicey so you know a lot of players will ex experience frustration you're chasing down the turtles and nothing's landing and they just run out the clock right now things are different as you saw a lot of nice hall tools do chip damage now it's very interesting so chip damage introduced what does that mean right is it is it gonna change the game? Uh, I think so. Now, why is that? First, let's look at the situations with dealing chip damage previously, right? The opponent had to be stand blocking, and you had to approach with core circle core three, which is a godlike low, right? Still, in my opinion, right? But it's minus fourteen on block, and then if you weren't a really good at adjusting your timing, right? It's it's not you, you, it's not gonna do anything. It's also not that scary, right? This 18 damage is a lot. I think it's scary, but you know, not a lot of players are gonna be worried about eating too many of this, right? When as you're approaching and then they just disrupt your approach, you're it it, it, it can be more difficult in practice than on paper to just win a round off of this alone, right? It's also not very flashy. When Paul's known for his big hits, right? You want to be landing your death fist, but they, if they just eat this all day and then they disrupt you, it, it it's difficult, right? So not a lot of people would feel pressure on Paul when they're not pressing into him. This is all changing now, right? With the addition of chip damage. Now, they can't just stand block all day. But, Shazam, what about them getting back their Greyhound, right? Also... Banco, please, for the, wait, did they, they didn't update this, did they? No. Please, for the love of God, let us set health values in training. I don't understand why we can't do that. I, I don't, I don't understand it. Anyway. But that's exactly what you want, right? In order to get back this gray health, right, that I can, if they're just stand blocking all day, within, within two Quarter circle back force, right? You block one, block two, that's 12 damage. Yes, it's gray health, but it's way more than this low poke is gonna get you, right? It's also way easier to apply than this low, right? A homing plus on block counter hit launcher may be a little easier to get blocked than, or you know, land than the low, maybe. Especially at ranges, right? But, and then in order to get back this gray health, they have to attack, meaning they have to interact with you. So what happens when they attack, right? Call it out, duck the jab into wall standing four, movement, sidestep the jab, right? If they do something else, if it's punishable, block it and punish. This is how you're going to force the interaction with the opponent, right? If the opponent is just blocking, safely approach and then just start, oh, that doesn't do any chip. Just start doing your moves that do chip damage, right? Look out, instead of going, all right, let me just be obvious with my low, right? 
Look for the ranges where your low would be the threat and then just slam them in, right? If they duck expecting the low, you, you get a nice chunky mid for your troubles. If they block, if they just stand block, right? They're, they're gonna start eating. Look at all this chip damage, right? If they are moving, that's what the low is for. This stuff, this quarter circle four, three low, this shit's still homing, right? So focus on how to set up this chip damage, right? It will be a low commitment way to put on pressure, on actual pressure on the opponent and force them to interact with you where your defensive tools, right? Your other counter hit launchers, your punishment, right? Or you just various defensive tools and keep out, right? That will start working. Previously, right? You just got to do the low, force the 50-50, hope you get to the wall and maybe something will happen, right? But now, right? This this will set up your whiff punishment, your frame traps, your spacing, right? Especially with the changes to forward one plus two. This is where the money maker is gonna be, right? Ten points of chip damage, right? Focus on how you can set this up. Look. Block one, block two. Look at all that gray health they'd have to get back. You'd be able to notice it more if they just let me set the health values, but that is a different problem. Right. Throughout a match, how often are you going to land this, right? Maybe two or three times, right? And if it gets blocked, if it gets hit, you're golden, right? If it gets hit, you're, you're chunky damage. But if this gets blocked, even just two, maybe three times in a round, that's 30 points of free damage you have gotten, right? Yes, the opponent can fight to get it back, obviously. But that's what you want. You want your opponent not to just sit there, right? In Tekken 8, it's less likely to run into these types of turtles, but it's still possible and you need to consider your approach and how you're going to put pressure on them without committing too much risk to yourself, right? Additionally, the biggest thing for me is just this will boost your other options a lot, right? Now, let's say, let's say you've conditioned them you, let's say you like doing charge 1 plus 2 into charge 1 plus 2 or charge 1 plus forward 1 plus 2 into just regular forward 1 plus 2, right? Now, all of a sudden, where, you know, you've conditioned them to expect two mids in a row, right? You can now mix it up, right? So let's do standing block. Now... Your low, your back four, which is previously only 14 damage, technically now has a nice extra bit of 24 damage. Look at that, right? Now you're plus four, and now you can start throwing them, right? Boop, boop, right? Instead of just 14, now you technically have a full 21 points of damage, right? Always consider how your chip damage will accentuate and supplement your other options your throws, your lows, right? DPD4, this thing reaches all the way from Narnia, right? Look at that range. I'm at, God, I'm at range 4.5. Can I still reach? Ah, uh, just a little bit. So range 4.3, let's see. Yeah, baby, look at that. Look at that range, right? Now combine, now imagine this, right? Oftentimes, as an opponent blocks this, they'll be backdashing. So you just backdash, right? You do it once, they start backdashing, you chase them down with a 17 damage, 18 damage low, right? Boosted with the chip damage from previously, and now where they were only at like a 10 health deficit that they could get back, now they're at a 28 health deficit with 18 of it being true damage, unrecoverable damage. Look for these opportunities. Another option to consider is at the wall, right? They can't run, and now you can just set up all this stuff. This is a bit of a... Now, why at the wall, right? Imagine this, you, you've you rushed the opponent to the wall, they're on your wake up, they immediately block your forward one plus two, that's 10 points of damage, and now you can set up a frame trap, right? Right, so 
So 71 points of damage off a throw that now has extra 10 points associated with it. If you're worried about homing, right, you have your homing throw, that still does 40 damage, right? So consider how your chip damage accentuates your other options here, especially at the wall, right? Now your wall combo, where it might have taken one more interaction to kill, can now set up. Excuse me. You just have an extra poke in there. So I want to just get, try to get you thinking more about chip damage about how it interacts versus defensive, turtly, or passive opponents, right? And how you can do a lot without putting any risk on yourself. What risk is Paul taking by doing a plus on block, plus on hit mid, right? That's pretty fast, right? Once you've conditioned the opponent and really pressure them into start interacting with you more, then you immediately switch gears, right? You go back into the whiff punishment, right? go back into frame trapping with throws right very easy stuff to apply so when you're chasing down that turtle when you're trying to just chase them down consider using you know, a little bit more dpt4 deep dive 4 or it, once you condition them to start expecting the low just start doing the mid right if it lands nice if it gets blocked nice and then just put on the put a pressure on the opponent in that way force them to interact with you and set up your wave punishment if they keep blocking you just keep chipping them down right anyway that's not, those are just ideas i want to present and hopefully give you some food for thought all right have a good one